Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Asunda Facebook Live Talk. My name is Kevin. I'm a physiotherapist at Asunda Hospital. Today, we will be presenting on women's and joint pain. Our speaker today is Dr. Shamala. She's our consultant, physician, and rheumatologist. She graduated from University of Liverpool, United Kingdom, back in 2001. And since she has practiced her housemanship and completed her specializations, her expertise include dealing with inflammatory disorder of joint, tendon, muscle, and ligaments. Before we proceed, please type in the comments box below if you have any questions, and we will be answering all your questions during the Q&A sections. Q&A session. Okay, okay. With, without further ado, without further ado, let's us welcome Dr. Sharma to speak about women's and joint pain. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I think this is our 13th Asunta live talk and my second. Thank you very much for joining me. So the topic today is woman and joint pain. I think it's a very dear topic uh, for me, being a rheumatologist. For the simple reason, the joint pains that I see tend to happen in women. And we all know that for some reason, women tend to have more pains compared to men. So I think any one of us in the population would have had some form of pains or other. It could be something as slight as a soreness in the back, a twinge at the shoulder, a very severe pain in the knee after maybe exercise, or even pains in the fingers. With 360 joints in your body, there is obviously a high risk of experiencing some form of pain in your lifetime. So don't worry, it's normal. But we are interested in figuring it out when it's not normal and there's something going on. Okay, but let me start by just putting up this particular slide. Basically, I want to point out that actually a lot of aches and pains in our body are very much related to our daily stress. As you can see, currently we're going through a very terrible pandemic, something that nobody expected, and it's been very prolonged. Any form of mental stress can add on to you know, different symptoms in different organs. So you can have things like um, depression, anxiety, of course, an increase in blood pressure, heart rate. But I'm interested in talking about aches and pains in your joints and muscles. And to be honest with you, I am seeing a bit more. It can be as simple as a back pain because, you know, they're not having ergonomically, um, ergonomically um, fitted chairs and tables at home. It could be joint pains because you've started doing a bit more uh, cleaning up at home. So it can be something as simple or something as severe. So let's start. So every one of us gets the occasional aches and pains. But research has shown that women and older people in general are more frequently affected compared to men. And this can be four times more common. So you could start off with maybe a pain in your joints. Let's say the finger joints. You decide to ignore it, take a Panadol. Eventually, it becomes a bit longer, two weeks, three weeks. You decide, no, leave it alone. If you don't do anything about it, eventually you become a bit anxious about it. It affects your sleep. And there come a point where you may not be able to cope with the pains at all. And at this point, you could have actually gone to other joints. So only then a patient decides to come and see a doctor. What I'm trying to get to is that isn't it better to sort it out at the beginning so that you do not go through all those issues leading to a chronicity? So the usual cycle of arthritic pain is that when you have a particular pain in a joint, so for example, let's take the knee joint. If you get a pain in your jo knee joint, you decide not to move much, correct? If this carries on for a few weeks, it is associated with weight gain. If that carries on, there's increased joint stress. Eventually, with inflammation, your pain gets worse. So this is a cycle and the aim is to actually break the cycle as fast as possible. So a lot of people feel that, okay, maybe if I take two Panadols, it gets better. Yes, but Panadols are, or Paracetamol is not an anti-inflammatory medication. It may not help fully with an arthritic pain. So let's go through two main words, actually. One is arthralgia. 
So technically, your pains in your joint may just be a discomfort, an ache or a sore. That is an arthralgia. But when there's associated inflammation, to be honest, the pains are much more. And only then is it called an arthritis. So in short, an arthritis is a joint which is inflamed. There are more than 100 different kinds of arthritis. And each of it has its own risk factors and symptoms. So the diagnosis and treatment of arthritis is usually um, co-managed by a rheumatologist. The rheumatologists tend to deal with more the immune-related arthritis, your primary care physician, and orthopedic doctors. So what is a joint in the first place? A joint is basically a connection between your bones. They provide support and help you move. So probably you're used to seeing an x-ray. You go to a doctor, they probably take an x-ray and you see the bones are very white and dense. But there's a space here and that's where the cartilage is supposed to be. So this area is called a joint. So any damage to your joint, let's say at the cartilage, at the tendons inserting into the joint, at the lining around the joint, can cause pain. And this interferes with mobility. So what we tend to see in practice is knee pains tend to present more commonly. Secondly, it's shoulders third hip, and lastly, ankles. And like I said earlier, it is more common as you get older. It can be mild to severely debilitating. It can be a few weeks to a few months. The pain can arise from any part of your joint, like I mentioned earlier. Your joint, most people think maybe it's the joint, but may not be the joint itself. It may be the cartilage around the joint, the bone itself, it could be the ligament holding the joint, tendons, or even the mes muscles surrounding the joint. So when you do see a doctor, we'll be assessing a few things. On examination, some things are obvious, but most of the time we do need further tests and x-rays to help us make a diagnosis. So the common type of joint pains that I see include osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus-related uh, arthritis, scleroderma, and fibromyalgia and polymyalgia rheumatica. We'll come to fibromyalgia a bit later on. But what I'm trying to say is, if you notice, rheumatoid arthritis, for example, is three times more common in females compared to men. Something like scleroderma or lupus is nine times more common in men, uh, sorry, in ladies compared to men again. I will come to fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is not really a joint issue, but it's perceived as joint pain sometimes. And this is eight times more common in women. So when you see a doctor, there are a few things that we are evaluating and assessing. One, most importantly, is, is it only one joint which is involved, maybe your knee, or is it multiple joints? Maybe it's your knee, shoulder, fingers, or we need to know how long have you had it for? Is it something that is coming and going? Is it something that came on over two weeks, three weeks, six weeks? And most important for you to tell us is what type of pain is it? Is it something which is inflammatory? So how do we decide whether it's something inflammatory? Inflammatory means there's inflammation. And inflammatory joint pain tends to happen more in the morning, get better with movement. However, degenerative is the opposite of inflammatory, where there's actually degeneration going on at the joint itself, tends to happen more at the end of the day when you're tired, you've moved your joints a lot. Another thing that helps us make a diagnosis is, is there any spinal involvement, i.e. Is, uh, is there back pain, neck pain? And of course, any associated symptoms are very important, such as a rash, fever, mouth ulcers, um, sexually transmitted infections can also cause any of these joint pains. So like I told you earlier, it is important a full assessment is done. And when you do see a rheumatology doctor, we do tend to do a full assessment because it helps us make the diagnosis with more than 50% of cases. However, we do need to do certain physical examination, run a few lab investigations and certain uh, x-rays or MRI scans. So I'm sure you're waiting to know why are women, for some reason, affected more than men. So it has been well um, known that there are a few factors that may contribute to this disparity. Okay, 
women are apt, more apt than men, to have conditions that cause joint pain. And it's not helped by our hormonal fluctuations. So the hormonal fluctuation, in this case, estrogen, tends to affect women a bit more than men. And another point to note is that maybe women may not be physiologically equipped to deal with pain. Our muscles are a bit more limber. Our synovium is a bit more thinner. There are a few issues that maybe have not been proven. Okay? But what has been proven that estrogen has got a big connection to your pains. And estrogen in ladies, in women, keeps inflammation in check. So what research has shown is that women with osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and fibromyalgia tend to report more joint pain just before or during their periods. And things get better after that. So the reason, the physiological reason behind that is because estrogen levels will plummet just before menstruation and will rise again as your periods end. And estrogen, like I said earlier, tends to protect you against this. So the lack of estrogen during these periods causes a bit more joint pains. So 80% of women with rheumatoid arthritis will experience a remission of symptoms during pregnancy. Again, during pregnancy, your estrogen levels are low. However, estrogen levels go up after you deliver. So it's been associated with a higher um, uh, activity of such as rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. So our patients will tend to get better during pregnancy. However, they get worse after delivery and that's not the best time to have the pains. So let's go to a second possibility, structure. The female structure itself shows that women have an increased um, joint and ligament mobility, i.e. women tend to be a bit more limber. And this elasticity allows you to have more movement and therefore a greater risk of developing joint pain. Could this be due to slight injuries to your ligament, to your tendon? Possible. Could it be due to the injury to the joint itself? Yes. So women tend to get arthritis also slightly later than men. But when they do get it, it tends to hurt more. I guess a general rule is that men tend to have more physical um, related work. So they tend to present earlier. Ladies tend to have a bit less physical. However, structure and our genetics have shown that women tend to get arthritis later on in life. Does it go with our menopause? Maybe. I'll come to that. Weight. This plays a very big part. Any extra weight means more arthritis. And women have a greater risk of obesity compared to men. Any excess weight put on on your knees puts pressure onto your knee, erodes your cartilage faster and therefore raising your arthritis risk itself. So if you know, for example, rheumatoid arthritis is not a cartilage issue, but osteoarthritis, which is a very cartilage related issue, tends to happen in ladies a bit more, especially if they're overweight. And the best treatment will be to lose that excess weight, to lose that excess pressure onto your knee. Studies have shown that every additional pound you put on equals to four pounds of weight in the knee. That's a lot. So genetics, yes, it's very related to genetics. So for once, you can blame your mother. Family history raises your risk of both genders. However, the connection seems to be much stronger in women. A woman whose mother has had or had arthritis in the past tends to develop um, the same kind of arthritic problems at the same age. So for example, I've seen many patients with finger joint arthritis, osteoarthritis. When I always ask them, there's always a family history, but maybe the mother never complained about it. Maybe it's currently your, the current patient has a work which is a bit more physical, so they're noticing it earlier. But it should be honest with you, a lot of joint pains, is, uh, it's up to your patient's, patient's uh, pain threshold. We'll talk about that in a bit also. So there's types of joints involved which are also shown to have some disparity actually. For men, it tends to you they tend to complain about joint problems at the hip. And women, it tends to be at the hands and knees. Also, please note a woman's hips are also wider, hence it affects the alignment of the knees in a way that leaves them with a bit more vulnerable issues over the knees and the um, uh, ankles actually. So Whatever uh, 
excessive weight that you put on around your um, hips tends to translate into more arthritis down the road also. So this is a particularly important topic. I've just lumped together about hand arthritis. So there are some patients who come telling you, you know, my joints are painful in my hands. Okay, that might be a bit of osteoarthritis, but some tell you my whole hand is painful. So that's when it's important to note that it may not be an arthritic event. It may be your nerve. It may be your muscle. Let's talk a little bit about it. Okay, let's start with osteoarthritis. So like I mentioned earlier, Osteoarthritis is a degenerative issue. It is the commonest joint problem, common at the age of 40s, 50s, and of course, by the age of 80s. But only 50% of patients actually have some form of symptoms. Interesting, isn't it? You may go to a doctor complaining about a thigh pain. They may do an x-ray of your knee just to make sure it's not a knee. You may see issues at your knee, uh, at your x-rays, However, you may not have pain because only 50% of patients actually have some changes. Women also tend to present earlier. We tend to present at the age of 40 to 70 and after which men tend to um, men and women tend to have equally um, issues actually. So the symptoms that patients tend to present with are mild aches, a bit of stiffness, especially in the morning. And what they really note is when they don't move their finger, it gets a bit more stiff. When they start exercising, it gets better. But of course, things get worse at the end of the day when they've exercised a lot. So it's been known that when as osteoarthritis progresses, your joint motions become more restricted. If you can see these um, finger, uh, finger pictures that I've put on, you can see the knuckles here are slightly bigger than a normal knuckle here. And you can see this quite obviously. And this is a closer shot of another patient and you can see the finger here is very big. The knuckle here is very big and this one very subtle but you can probably watch and uh, notice the difference compared to the other hand. So this is bone formation, extra bone formation that gives you what we call a nodal appearance. It looks like a node of your finger and that is osteoarthritis of the hand. So erosive osteoarthritis is a type of arthritis of the hand where there is associated inflammation. Synovitis means there's inflammation around the joint and cyst formation in that uh, hand. So it tends to affect DIP and PIP. DIP and PIP and couple metacarpal joint, if I just go back to the other slide, this is your DIP joint, this is your PIP joint, and that is your couple metacarpal joint just at the base of your thumb. So it tends to happen a bit more, more 20% more in the hands, okay? But the cup, metacarpal joint, which is your wrist joint, I don't have a picture of that, tends to be spared. And that kind of differenti differentiates you from a patient presenting with rheumatoid arthritis, which tends to happen a bit more in the wrist. However, it is uncertain for now and, uh, whether erosive OA, where it basically just means it's erosions in your joint with this inflammation, is a type of arthritis or is it a precursor of rheumatoid arthritis? Okay, so the second commonest thing that I tend to see in patients complaining of hand pain is something called carpal tunnel syndrome. As the name suggests, if there is a tunnel at your wrist here, okay, and underneath there is where a nerve called the median nerve passes through. So if that Median nerve gets compressed due to the pressure from this carpal tunnel, this transverse ligament. You tend to complain of pain and paresthesia means numbness in that nerve's distribution. So you can see the nerve is going to your thumb and mainly the two and a half digits here. So this is the distribution of the median nerve. Patients tend to complain about pain and numbness usually. So how do you make that diagnosis? Yes, it's from what you tell me but I tend to confirm it with a nerve conduction test or an ultrasound scan done at the bedside. The treatment include using a splint, giving you certain painkillers, but they may not be as effective, and sometimes giving a steroid injection just at that area there. Okay, If none of those work, then the definitive treatment will be a surgical uh, intervention. So another common issue at your uh, hand is something called decurvin stenocytophytis. 
So earlier we spoke about a joint issue at the hand, osteoarthritis, a nerve issue called carpal tunnel syndrome, and now we're talking about a tendon issue. So this is a tendon which passes right from your arm down to your hand here, the base of your thumb, and to your thumb itself. So that particular tendon can get compressed, inflamed, and that whole hand feels painful. But actually the pain is just at the wrist, at the thumb, at the base of the thumb, to be honest. So the treatment for this is the same, which is basically immobilizing that thumb, putting you in a splint, doing an ultrasound guided injection into that joint, and if all that doesn't work, then surgery will be the definitive treatment. So the last one I want to talk about is again a tendon-related issue, something called stenosing tenosynovitis or trigger finger. So trigger fingers are, ten, uh, are issues that tend to affect tiny tendons in your finger itself. So patients complain about pain at the base of the finger. They tend to say, when I do certain things, it's very painful. I, I can't do my gardening. Um, I've noticed that, you know, I can't hold something well enough. I can't use all my five fingers. So it tends to go with what kind of job you do. So if you're somebody who's always gardening, pulling shrubs, pulling weeds, and if you're diabetic, there's a higher risk, of course. So what happens is there is thickening of that tendon and there can be a nodule formation and that tends to block the movements of the finger. So you'll complain of something. You feel like your finger is being locked. You cannot open it. Some patients tend to say, oh, my finger is stuck. I can't open it. I have to physically open it myself. And then suddenly I can hear a snap. Okay, so that's like what we call a triggering effect. So treatment again is doing exercises, physiotherapy, um, doing certain um, uh, physical um, exercise that will really loosen that area. But of course, a bit of tendon, uh, sorry, a bit of steroid injection surrounding that tendon will really help. And again, if it does not help, definitive treatment will be surgery. Okay, so we went through all the things that we can talk about physical, i.e. it's the joint, it's your nerve, it's your tendon. Let's talk about something which is not really a physical effect. However, it is severely debilitating, something called fibromyalgia, hypothyroidism, and even depression. Okay, so let me start with fibromyalgia. I always tell my patients with fibromyalgia this, the pain is real. I understand how you feel. Nobody can see your pain, but it's there. So this tends to happen a bit more in female. So fibromyalgia is actually a disorder of pain. They actually feel a heightened pain sensation and like what the picture depicts, they actually feel something tearing through their body. And this is usually associated with severe tiredness, poor sleep, poor concentration, and just an inability to function. So this unpleasant and uncomfortable feeling, I always tell my patients, it's not dangerous. But of course, before I tell you that, I need to do a few tests to make sure it's nothing more sinister. So patients tend to have, um, uh, if I, you know, they're worried, do you think there's something wrong with my brain? Do you think there's some damage? No, it is just a sensation that you have. And unfortunately, it's not going to help with that simple paracetamol. You need further intervention, okay? And the most, um, most of the patients, if you talk to them, they will have some form of trigger, some related stress, actually. It can be a physical stress. It can be a mental stress. It could be getting over a certain prolonged infection. It could be certain injuries that you've had. And most of the time, it's, it's obvious with um, ongoing migraine or irritable bowel syndrome. So the sad part is there is no real cure. The good news is that we can manage your symptoms. So you do not need medication sometimes, sometimes even just exercise, using heat pack, cold pack, massages. Certain medications may help, but they are all short term. Fibromyalgia tends to be chronic. The good part about it is as you cope with it, you deal better with it, your pains tend to subside. Okay, a very common issue, hypothyroidism. Thyroid issues are common at any age group. But low thyroid, hypothyroid, which just means low amount of thyroid, is particularly common in women, particularly common as we get older. So it just basically means your thyroid gland, which sits here at your neck, is not giving you enough thyroid hormones. General things that you will notice is maybe a bit of mental slowness, body slowness, 
tiredness, putting on weight, constipation, hair loss, muscle cramps, and of course, joint pains. So there are a few groups of uh, thyroid-related uh, patients who complain more of joint problems and tend to present to an orthopedic or rheumatology doctor. So we will always do a simple blood test, thyroid, because a thyroid issue can be picked up very easily on a simple blood test. And the good news is the treatment is just thyroid hormone replacement and you will feel better after that. Okay, last issue that I want to talk about is depression. Depression is a feeling of sadness which is intense enough to interfere with your daily life. The usual trigger is something very sad that maybe have happened in your life, some loss, or it could be very well related to your hormonal changes. Patients don't complain about it. It's usually the family around them that tend to notice them becoming a bit more sad, sluggish. They tend to complain a bit more about aches and pains. They notice they're getting a bit more irritable and anxious. And yes, you do. You say probably it's happening more in the elderly, but no, it can happen at any age group. As you know, in certain countries, depression is a big issue, even in teenage years. So it's under-noticed, under-diagnosed, probably because of poor awareness. But 10% of these depression can lead to a major depressive disorder and even suicidal thoughts. So this is a slide to just show you the nine possible signs and symptoms of depression in women. And you will notice that most of the time, depression tends to be a bit more noticeable by others, not by yourself. What you would probably notice is a bit more aches and pains that, you know, soreness, let's leave it alone, but there's nothing physically wrong. Please come and see a doctor because this can be a chronic problem. Let's talk about general management. So I'm not talking about any particular joint, but general management for women and joint pain. Okay. The most important thing I tell my patients is you need to maintain your weight. Any extra weight puts more stress on your joint. So exercise, stay active, find an activity that you enjoy. If I tell you to go swimming and you can't swim, that defeats the purpose. If I tell you to cycle and you can't cycle, it defeats the purpose. Why don't you start with some walking exercises? Increase it to jogging. Do a bit more physical work around your home. That may help a little bit. Do something which relaxes you. Okay, that may help. And of course, don't just think about the joint. Think about the muscles surrounding the joint. So I always tell my patients with joint arthritis, this is the most important. Strengthening your muscles surrounding the joint. And a physical therapist or a physiotherapist will really help. Having a few sessions with the physiotherapist, learning what to do, and of course, continuing those exercises at home is most important. Lastly, use the price method. This is basically protect the joint, rest it, ice it, use a compression and elevate it. This is a general rule. And for, uh, for ladies particularly, if you're going through menopause, Certain symptoms like joint pain, hot flushes can be reduced by replacing that hormone for a few years. There are a few studies that show that you should not use hormonal replacement therapy for uh, over a certain number of years. Please speak to your gynecologist. It may help. Okay, the most important question, when do you go see your doctor? So you may obviously say a joint pain is normal, I'll live with it, it'll go away. But if um, if your joint pain is getting worse, please do come. Of course, the very important joint pain that we always worry about, especially if it's affecting one joint, is something called aseptic arthritis, which just means that joint is infected and that is an emergency. You need to clean up that infection to protect further damage to the joint. So most joint pains, you're right, can be managed at home, like my price method, which I told you about. Of course, the most important is rest it, ice it. You may use warm pack. So the general understanding is you use a warm pack for the muscles, you use the ice pack for your joint. Soak that joint in warm water, it may relieve the pain a bit. However, if you do have associated fever, weight loss, you're unable to even carry on with your daily life, you're feeling ill, the joint is very hot and swollen, there may be fluid accumulation, then please come and see a doctor. I just want to end by putting up this very nice a poem written by a friend's daughter. She's a teenager and I really liked it because I thought it, it kind of depicted what we're talking about basically. As women, we stand. So let me just read it out to you. So women, the female generation, always brought down, it is truly a devastation. 
Since the past, we have been rebelling for our freedom. Despite modernization, the world failed to see our contribution. They say men are strong, but believe me, they are wrong. Men look strong, but women are embedded with strength inside. To be honest, we are probably coping with the pain better. But yes, it is because of the joint pains, I think. Why is the world so cruel? Give us a chance, seize our struggle. So she wrote this poem to make all people realize that women too can make dreams materialize. I brought it out to you to tell you that despite your pain, you can continue. There is help available if you want it. Any questions? Kevin, I'll leave it to you. Okay. Wow. Thank you, Dr. Shamala, <laughs> for the informative and also the interesting topic. I hope it was not too long. No, it's fine. I've learned so much already about the women's and joint pain. So it looks like there are quite a number of the questions from our viewers. Oh, so let's drive straight into the questions, shall we, Dr. Okay, Shamala? let's try and answer them. Okay. Okay, the first questions. The first question uh, from Carmen Wong. Her question is, what is a rheumatoid arthritis symptom in the woman? Okay, so if you recall earlier, I told you about the osteoarthritis, which is the aches and pains with stiffness, so they basically get joint pain, but there may not be inflammation. But in rheumatoid arthritis, this is an inflammatory issue, meaning there is actually swelling in your joint. So the common complaints tend to be a bit of stiffness, aches, and of course, swelling in that joint. It tends to affect more at the wrist, these joints here and these joints here. This is called the MCP and PIP joint. It never, never affects the tips of your fingers. So that's one differentiating factor. So just to summarize, basically it will be joint pain, swelling, early morning stiffness. Okay. So for the second question, So for the second question from Rachel Lu, her question is, can your period make your joint pain? Okay, so like I told you earlier, the periods cannot make your joint pain, but the fluctuation in hormonal level can be perceived as more joint pain. So if you notice uh, the estrogen, remember I said the estrogen will plummet just before your menstrual cycle. So it's just a day or two before, people tend to complain a bit more aches, pains, feeling tired, so yes, it can probably accentuate your pain, but it doesn't cause the pain, to be okay. honest. Sure. And so for the third question, the third question from the SP Chen, his question is, is there any preventive measure for the knee pain? Ha ha ha, preventive? No. Um, okay, um, let's general rule, technically. Lose that way, keep an active lifestyle, do your strengthening exercises, you may not get your joint pain. But if you want to tell, if you, I guess your question would be, do you need to take supplements to prevent joint pain? No. There's a few supplements out there, such as glucosamine, desplatin, arthroda, and like the name suggests, they're all supplements, they're not medications. Can they be used as a prevention of joint pain? I always tell my patients this. If you don't have joint pains, don't take it. Because I'm not going to know whether it's working. Yeah. But if you do start with the aches and pains, it's the initial part of your cartilage issue, then yes, taking the supplements to prevent worsening of your joint pain, yes, that would be most useful. I see. So you can always start with one supplement, try it for a few months, and it's usually three months to six months. Mm -hmm. If it's not helping, fair enough, change it to a different supplement. But don't say the supplement is the one that's going to prevent it. Whatever it is, it is going to progress. It's going. The whole idea of supplement is to slow that progression. Okay, sure. So before we go on to the next questions, stay on live with us and don't go away. And also, if you have any query of the women's and joint pain, you can still submitting your questions on the below of the comments box. And then we later on, we are still continue answer your questions. So Tota, I have one question mm. I want to ask you okay. like outside there's so many of the questions mm -hmm. like in the market there's mm -hmm. so many of the supplement okay 
is there any supplement that you can recommend to us? Mm, okay, like I alluded earlier, mm-hmm. uh, Kevin, mm-hmm. you've got things like glucosamine, yeah. okay, uh, pescladine, mm-hmm. which is soya base, uh, you've got arthroda. Mm-hmm. So, um, can I recommend? No, I don't think any of the doctors would actually recommend. We'll always tell you to try. Okay, you can try uh, glucosamine first, go to your PS bladding, go to your arthroda next, up to you. Okay, why we will never tell you it's 100%? Mm-hmm. Because in most studies, it showed it helped maybe more than 50% of patients in terms of pain. I see. There's no study to say, oh, the cartilage grew back. Why is your pain not better? No, it's going to be from what you tell me. Did it help? Mm-hmm. Okay, so give it a try. But mm-hmm. I always tell my patients, talk to your doctor first because the dose of the supplement is very important. Okay. So in the studies, when a drug shows to work, it's at a particular dose. Okay. Not just taking one tablet and say, hey, it didn't work. Mm-hmm. No, talk to your doctor. Okay, okay sure. Okay, so how important is a pen score uh, according to your management? Oh, very important. Mm. I tend to do this with most of my rheumatoid arthritis patients. Technically all actually. Why? Because when you first come and see me, I know you, the time you've come, it's when your joint pains are the most severe. So always give them a simple scoring method. One, no pain, and the worst pain ever. Okay. So if they can't give me a score, I'll say, let's just say your pain is 10 now. Mm-hmm. At one month follow-up, tell me what's your pain. Mm-hmm. My aim is to get your pain score to 1 over 10, meaning no pain. I so see. scoring is very important, actually. And I'm sure you do that and part of physiotherapy yeah. also, right? Mm, yes, yeah. we do. We do. Mm-hmm. So from the... We are, uh, like, let's say we give the patients uh, the PS score, right. like, one is no pain, one mm-hmm. then it's a very severe pain. So we are uh, ask them, because we cannot, we cannot, uh, we don't know how much is a patient's pain Correct. score. Correct. So we are only can, like, let patient answer first. Yes, because mm-hmm. I've, I've met many patients with, okay, they come in with one knee, which is very swollen, mm-hmm. you know, you do an injection, you take out about 20 mils of liquid, but they tell you my pain score is three, doctor. It's because their threshold of pain yes, is yes, very yes. high. Yeah. Yes, But of course, you've got another patient who hardly has any swelling mm-hmm. by giving a pain score of 9 over 10. Okay. So it, it, it's a good uh, baseline test to do and follow up with, but it's not a good test to tell you, oh, that's how severe it is. No, ah, you have to correlate it with what you see and from what you find in your blood test. I see. Okay. Okay. So we continue answer the Okay, there's one more question from the Ng Pei Wang. Hmm. Uh, can, f- can, food, well, can food cause your joint pain? Oh, okay, not really. There's only one type of arthritis which is very, 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 very related hmm. to food and that's gout. So I never touched on that for the simple reason. The good part is gout never affects ladies until post-menopause. So 90% of gout patients are males. If you recall from my last talk, which I did, it tends to happen with certain food trigger, which we call high purine food. So in terms of osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, or all the other arthritis I spoke about, no, there is no food trigger. No food trigger. But of course, mm-hmm. a lot of Asian patients will tell you, if I ate kacang, yes. it gets worse. Yes. If I ate kobis, it gets worse. It's that heatiness kind mm. of thing. But in research, there is no evidence so far. I see. Except for gout. Except okay? for gout. Except for gout. I so I always tell my patients this, fair enough. Most of the studies are carried out in the Western world. Mm. Where, you know, nobody believes yes. in food trigger. Yes, yes. Asians tend to have a yin and yang, yeah, you yeah. know, yin food, yang food trigger, heat. Heaty food, cold food, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Keep your diary. Okay. If you feel that is the trigger, avoid it. Mm-hmm. Get your disease better. If you love that food so much, okay. introduce it back when you're well. See mm-hmm. if it's a trigger again. I see. Yeah. But so far in research, to summarize, no food yeah. trigger. I see. Okay. There's one more question from Mandy Ong. The question is, can joint pain happen even before your menopause? Yes. To be honest, uh, if you speak to a gynecologist, they'll tell you menopause is when you totally do not have your periods at all for more than one year. Mm. Correct? I think that's the definition. Six months or one year. Mm. However, the pre-menopausal stage, mm. which can be two years, three years preceding that, okay. can have joint pains. And that's when you may have a fluctuation of hormonal levels. Mm. So certain patients, I mean, menopause can be anytime between the age 45 to 55. 
So preceding that, you can have fluctuation of hormonal levels. And with, depending on your estrogen level, you can start with your joint pains then. So hum, uh, hormone replacement therapy or any form of hormone replacement mm. may help at that stage. Nice. Don't see me, see your gynecologist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. So, uh, okay, there's one more question for the card long. Is ostro is estrogen indicated as part of rheumatoid arthritis treatment after menopause? No, it's not. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> no. Okay, estrogen is very associated with the um, menopause, yes, mm -hmm. but not in rheumatoid arthritis treatment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so far, there is no evidence for that. All rheumatoid arthritis treatment is according to what we call disease-modifying drugs. It's an immune-related problem. We need to modify your immune system to stop it from attacking the joints. Okay. okay? In fact, in patients with some uh, systemic lupus, lupus okay, um, estrogen in certain doses, you consider high doses, can actually trigger your disease. Or trigger your trigger disease. your disease. But that's an association with SLA, okay, or lupus. Not with rheumatoid arthritis, but no, it's not part of our treatment at all. I see. Okay, so do you think um, hydrotherapy mm -hmm. treatment yes. is like benefit to the arthritis problem? God, yes. Um, I mean, you being a physiotherapist, okay. Kevin, I don't think you would recommend hydrotherapy for everybody, correct? Mm, correct. But if it's, um, I mean, just to note that Asunta is one of the few hospitals which actually has the yes. hydrotherapy yeah. pool. Mm -hmm. It's not very expensive. Mm. Um, the sessions are half an hour, is it? Around 45 minutes 45 to, one hour. to one hour. Still depend on the patient condition. Okay. Mm. So if you've got a patient with um, painful joint which is swollen, yep. I feel hydrotherapy really helps. Yes. Because the warm water yes. tends to relax your muscles surrounding the joint. Relaxing your muscle as mm -hmm. well as reducing the pain over the pain. your joint. Area. Correct. Yes. And so, also the water resistance at the yeah. same time as like, just like you say, we want to strengthen back the surrounding muscles. muscles. So yeah. by giving you the water resistance, it's able to help you to strengthen, strengthen the muscle. that muscle. Correct. Yeah. So you don't need hydrotherapy forever. Mm -hmm. It's at the beginning, isn't yes, it? Yes, just it. Just to get you pain free once you're better. Move on to normal strengthening exercises. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I see? So, in the interest of time, I'm afraid we we won't be able to address all your questions. Mm -hmm. But thank you all who stayed during the live with us. Well, we have reached the end of the live talk today. Thank you once again to all the live uh, people with us, and thank you, Doctor Shamala, for giving us a deep, deep look into the all these questions and about the wounds and joint pain. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, actually. Okay. Uh, it's been a pleasure to talk about this today. And I think we're going to end the year. Yeah. And I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And yeah. let's just hope and pray 2021 is going to give us some hope for a better future. Okay? Sure. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. And also, we have come to the end of the Facebook Live Talk of the year 2020. Doctor, do you have any like advice for, to give your patients during this pandemic or any taking home message? Well, definitely stay home, stay safe, protect your joints. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean stay home, don't do any exercise. You can always do uh, what we call running, jogging, running, jogging at home. <laughs> you can do strengthening exercises at home, open up your YouTube channel, it's all there. Yes, and also some stretching exercise. Yes. Yeah. Okay, lastly, I would like to wish every one of you Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Stay safe, stay healthy. And also, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.